Have you tried self-publishing books on Amazon but your books just aren't selling? Or are you a beginner and you just don't know how to get started? If you answered yes to either of these questions, then watch this video because we're about to show you exactly how to master the most important part of Kindle publishing, niche selection. When looking for a niche to publish in, you are going to want to try and find something with high demand and low competition. And I, I mean high demand, low competition, not pretty good demand and not so much competition. Publishing niches with crazy high sales volume and very little competition. In Facebook groups I'm a part of, I see people complaining, or not complaining, they talk a lot about how they're not finding profitable niches or how it's hard and they spend all day and they haven't found anything. Like, it's supposed to be hard. Mm -hmm. If it was easy, everyone would be in these niches. Like, if you easily found it, there would be a ton of other people who also easily found it. So it's not gonna be easy to find. But uh, uh, they exist, you just have to keep looking, keep looking, keep looking. Be persistent. Right. Yeah. And don't settle for anything but a home run niche. Mm -hmm. So when you're looking for niches with uh, high demand and low competition, there are certain things that you're looking for to find these characteristics. Mm -hmm. So for a high demand niche, you're looking at the BSRs of books. So if you don't know what that is, that's a bestsellers rank, and Amazon provides you with all this information. So you're gonna wanna look at the bestsellers ranks of books in a certain niche under a certain keyword, and you're gonna see how much each book is selling. And you're obviously gonna take other things into consideration, uh, but those are the basics. All right, so we just realized that we forgot to plug in our mic, so yeah. we just did that now, and I wonder if it sounds any different. We're just gonna leave the beginning part in. Yeah. So, if how much of a mic, how much a difference a mic really makes? All right. Okay. As we were saying, one of the regular standards that people use when looking for the demand of a niche is looking for the first uh, six to eight uh, search results to have a BSR under one hundred thousand. And yeah, that works. Uh, that means those first six to eight books are selling pretty well. And maybe the rest of the first page, they're doing okay. But again, that's probably just a good niche. We don't want to publish in good niches. We want to publish in home run niches. So I like to see the entire first page, which is 20 search results. Uh, every book, uh, if not being under 50,000, average of around 50,000. Uh, and you might not have seen niches like that, but that's probably because you haven't looked hard enough because they're out there. Uh, and that's really what it comes down to, publishing in these, that, that's the biggest difference maker, uh, is publishing in these home run niches. And then one of the um, standards to look at by competition is looking at search results, and a lot of people selling will, will look for a niche with less than 3,000 search results, which yeah, that's okay, you can make it work. But I want, I normally want to publish in niches with less than 500 search results. Uh, which means there's, what does that mean? Is that 10 pages of results? Yeah, that's 10 pages. No, that'd be 400. 10 to 12 pages of search results. Um, and a lot of those aren't even related to the keyword itself that you're trying to uh, target. So the odds of landing on the first page are a lot higher and a lot easier when publishing in these low competition niches. Now that we covered the basics about how to find home run niches, let's go on the computer and go on Amazon.com, do some searches, and we'll show you what one of these home run niches actually looks like. Let's Wait, go. Wait, I'm gonna do it. Okay. All right, guys. Now we're on Amazon.com. Let's go to the Kindle store. Let's okay. uh, first. We're gonna show you guys. We're gonna drop down to yeah. the Kindle store so that you're only searching within the Kindle store. Right. And what do you search? we're going to start by showing you guys uh, an example of a, a bad niche that has too much competition. Okay. So this is a popular one. I know I published in this one. This is one of my first books, Paleo Diet. Right. Let's see. Let's so analyze first, and show you why you should not publish a Paleo Diet book. This has 7,000 search results. That's way, way, way too many. Unless all the books on this page have a BSR of under 10,000. You can already give up on this one because it's not going to be a good niche. It's going to be impossible to be visible. All right. So you're, you're just going to get lost in a sea of paleo diet books. 
Let's see. The first one has a BSR of six thousand. Look, like this is a sponsored book. So that means this book is running, is having ads run for it. Right. So when you're looking, when you're doing your research, don't look at the sponsored books. Mm -hmm. So just ignore those. It's always the first two, or the, normally the first two. So this is a top ranked book for Paleo. That's a fifteen thousand. That's a great rank, BSR. But uh, yeah, number two, six thousand, sixteen thousand. Oh yeah, wait. Before we go on, 000. yeah. So the way that we can see all these uh, sales ranks without having to click on the book is because we have this plugin called DS Amazon Quick View, I think it's called. Yeah. Up here. Yeah, DS Amazon Quick View. Uh, if you're doing niche research, it is a must-have. So just Google search DS Amazon Quick View download. Download. It's a Chrome plugin, so you have to use it for Chrome. Uh, download it, and then you'll have the same uh, tools to work with. Or we'll just put the link in the description. Yeah. Sure, we'll put a link in the description. All right, so let's look at these. 19,000, 16,000, 38,000. These are, these are really good BSRs, but the thing is there's 7,000. Yeah. I mean, let's look at how many pages thing, there are. Another thing to keep in mind when looking... 400 pages of books. Yeah. You're going to end up on page 80 Yeah. Another if you, search a paleo, if you uh, publish a paleo book. You're yeah. never going to... Um, no one's ever going to find it. That's the only issue. No one's going to find the book. Yeah. But another thing to keep in mind when looking at... Uh, sales numbers is the price of every book because this sales number does not take the price into consideration and The reason why I say that is because I noticed this paleo book this paleo for dummies as Not a very good rank 211,000, but it's selling for over $14 So it's naturally not gonna sell as much, but even these other $10 books are selling well um, so yeah, the uh, Paleo diet passes the test in terms of sales volume has very high sales volume. Very high demand. Yeah, very high demand, very good sales numbers. These are great numbers. So, but then because of the 7,000 search results, this one's a no-go. You would not, you would probably not make a lot of money here because no one would find your books. So, uh, what you could try doing is making the search more specific. So, example, if you want to do paleo diet for beginners, let's just see what comes up. So, this, this is called a long tail keyword. Right. So, still there's 1,000 search results. That's still more than we want. It's a lot less than 7,000. So, these are probably also going to have good sales numbers. Still sponsored. So, first one, 6,000. It looks like it's the same books coming up here. Um, 500,000. That's not so great, but that's fine. 200,000. So, experiment with making these uh, keywords into longer tail keywords and see how the numbers look then. Alright, so next I think we should look at... Um, a niche with the opposite scenario that has very low competition, which is what we're looking for, mm -hmm. and but not enough sales volume. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's see, let's have a nice this. Um, something like that would be, let's go croquet. Croquet, like the game. Okay, here we go. So croquet, just a random one I thought of, has great a number of search results. Fifty six. Uh, you're barely competing with anyone, so that. If you publish a book in Croquet, you're definitely going to rank on the first page. Without a doubt, you will rank on the first page, so that's all good and everything. But once you look at the sales numbers, you're, you're going to see that Croquet is not any uh, a keyword you want to publish under. So here, over 1 million, 158,000, 134,000, 2 million, 1 400,000, 600,000, you get the point. Um, so this niche had the opposite problem. So it had a great uh, amount of competition, as in it did not have much competition at all, but horrible sales volume. All right, and I guess now you can show them what a home run niche looks like. Yeah, so I have one home run book. I made a, uh, a video about it called How One Book Made $10,000. I said it was published under the keyword Weight Watchers, which... Maybe Weight Watchers smartphones. Right, well, Weight Watchers has been... In my opinion, is one of the best keywords on Amazon. Mm -hmm. So it has 1,000 search results now. I think back when I published that book, it was maybe 200 search results. And then since I published it back then, it's kind of kept uh, the rank that it used to have. Let's look at Weight Watchers smart points, though. Okay, try that. So Weight Watch. This is a, a Weight Watchers thing they have called Weight Watchers smart points. Weight Watchers smart points, guys. So this is a long tail keyword. 58 search results. Yeah, 58 results. Okay, and well, that doesn't really support what we're talking about. 1 million. Yeah. Uh, I wonder why that's ranked first. Yeah. Well, that's because they're using smart points, which you're not allowed to. It's 
Mm. Uh, they're using smart points. Smart points. Oh wait, take out guide. And guide. So yeah, that that's no longer first. Uh, the first one is an official Weight Watchers book. This is a book by Oprah. It costs seventeen bucks. Maybe just put Weight Watchers. They're not so bad. They're just maybe, fifteen dollars. Maybe Weight Watchers is shit now. Yeah. Well, no. Or type of Weight Watchers freestyle. Shit. <laughs> Weight Watchers freestyle. Yeah. All right. So now we're gonna look at Weight Watchers freestyle. Uh, this is, okay, let's see. Or oh, I'm, they're deleting all the books. Yeah. It says Weight Watchers, Weight Watchers Freestyle, Smart Points, they're all copyrighted terms. Uh, you're not allowed to use me in a title, and if you do, uh, Amazon's going to take the book down. So that's no. kind of what we're seeing that's been happening here. Yeah. Either this person is, like, approved to make books by Weight Watchers, or they just haven't taken the book down yet. Uh, it's a newly published book, so they yeah. just hasn't been taken down yet. So, but they're making a shitload of money. Holy on, shit, on a, look. on a ten dollar book, yeah. Yeah, not even a great cover. Seven thousand eight hundred sixty seven paid rank. This book is pulling in money. He's got reviews, like Yeah. He's done it right. Alright, look at the rest. Ninety four thousand. Thirty five thousand. Six thousand. Twenty Thirty-seven thousand, forty-eight thousand, forty thousand. Yeah, so, so far they're all yeah, exa exactly. So this is really good. exactly. So this is what we we're talking about. Forty-six thousand. This is 000. what this is what a home run niche looks 22, like. Twenty-two thousand. So uh, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Minus this one. Eleven of the first twelve all have BSRs under fifty thousand, and there's only ninety-two search results. Yeah. This is, is an example of a home run niche. Yeah. So if you published a Weight Watchers freestyle book, you would land on the first page because of how little competition there is. And as long as you have a good cover and title, you would be selling a lot like all the other books on this first page are doing. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's kind of what you're looking for. The thing is, Weight Watchers is copyrighted, so you can't use that in the title. But if you can somehow find a way to rank for that, uh, this would be a good option. But because of that... Um, Way you watch the street style is probably not a niche that I would use. Yeah. All right. So let's. I feel like we should recap quickly what it is you're looking for okay. when you're looking for uh, a home run niche. Okay. So this is what you're looking for. You want to. So for a competition, you want less than 500 search results. And if it has the six, lower the better. The lower the better. Yeah. So under 200, that's that's honestly what I think is perfect. Under 200, perfectly under 500. Um, I normally, I never publish over a thousand. I mean, I'll publish with seven, eight hundred um, search results if the if the num sales numbers are good. But under five hundred, let's go with that. And then for sales, you want so the first page is twenty books, an average of around fifty thousand or under. Mm -hmm. That's what you want. Uh, and this is gonna, con this is what makes up a home run niche. Once again, the lower the better. Yeah, again, uh, the lower the better. And remember... Be picky. Be very picky with the niches you choose. Don't just jump into something because, oh, it's the best I could find. Let's search for some other ones, right? What if you did a ketogenic meal plan? So ketogenic is way too big, way yeah. too crowded. You could never make a ketogenic book. But it has a lot of... It has a lot, a lot of, of sales, yeah. So, uh, but ketogenic, you could definitely make money in, but you just want to... Uh, Make a longer tail keyword. Alright, so 620 search results. We can live with that. It's, it's not it's on the edge. You. It's not under 500, but that's, but that's okay. Yeah. If the sales numbers are good enough. 6,000 BSR. 2,000. 16,000. 2,000. 10,000. Oh 15, my god. 000, oh my 4, god. 198. Okay, so that's the first one that's not great. Uh, the first. Oh, let's see, but look at look at the cover. Horrible cover. Yeah. So, so that's that that why. explains why it's at 200,000. So clearly, people love ketogenic meal plan yeah. books. I think we just uh, exposed a really hot niche. Yeah, look at 1, that. 1,000, 23. Yeah. I'd I say the search results is a little bit higher than you'd want, but the demand is so high that this could be really Yeah, niche. you can certainly make money here. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, not a bad one at all. Ketogenic meal plan. Yeah. Ketogenic meal plan is a good one. All right. So, uh, okay, last thing I think we should cover is, is just the uh, basic niches to begin your research in. So number one, uh, health Oops. and fitness. Health and fitness, look in all health and fitness. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where I started. I've made most of my money in health and fitness. So that would mean diet books, but also workout books. Uh -huh. uh, that's made diet and workout. Yeah. Another big niche is self-help. Mm -hmm. Now self-help covers 
hundreds and hundreds of sub niches, but Self Hub as a whole is selling to look into uh, business and investing books, how to make money online, uh, things like that. Crypto books, crypto investing, stock market investing. Yeah, that falls under a uh, business investing. How to books. get rich, stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, what are the some of the big ones? Technology ones, like yeah. maybe social media marketing, uh -huh. uh, programming. Languages, uh -huh. how-to books, just books that educate people. Yeah. Um, oh, one final thing to keep in mind is, so cookbooks are are is also a category that can sell really well with ebooks and paperback books, but you always want to remember that you're also going to make audiobook versions of everything. So cookbooks are basically not going to sell as audiobooks. So. Again, that's some, just something to keep in consideration if you want to spread out your income over all streams mm -hmm. is to publish books that would also sell well as audiobooks. And honestly, I think we've covered most of what it takes to find a home run niche, right? Yeah, most of it. Yeah, okay. Alright, um, hopefully this video wasn't too all over the place. Hopefully we can, uh, hopefully it made sense. You guys understand what we're talking about. If not, uh, ask us any questions you have, uh, like, comment, subscribe, uh, tell us what you think, we're here to help, so right. that's all it is, alright, see you in the next video.